Hello students and uh, welcome back to last section of uh, chapter 7, Confidence Intervals. This is um, where we try to determine the appropriate sample size. So one of the first things you'll have to do as a researcher is to determine how many surveys to hand out, how many people to talk to, how many pieces of data to collect in a certain population, how many, you know, how many things you need to do. And the, the decision is somewhat based on funding available, but it's also based on the, um, the researcher's desired or specified margin of error. So oops, we know um, how to calculate the margin of error. We've done that in the last few examples where we calculate that plus minus number, that margin of error, that's the sampling error. So um, when we start doing research, um, as I said, one of the first questions is um, how many surveys do we need to uh, hand out? How many pieces of data do we need to collect? So that is trying to determine our sample size. Um, so sample size is n. So we don't know what the sample size is. So this, generally one of the first things you do well before you develop any confidence intervals. So in order to limit the margin of, of error, the sample size is calculated prior to collecting the data because we need to know how many people to talk to or how many surveys to print out and hand off to people. So this is something we do before we collect any data. We need to determine um, how big our sample size is going to be. So there's two types of calculations for this. One is when we try to determine an appropriate sample size for questions dealing with the average or dealing with the mean. So all we're doing, I'm not going to show the, um, the process of doing this, but all we're doing is trying to um, um, calculate the sample size using this formula here. So the sample size needed for questions dealing with the average is going to be a certain z value, it's going to have a standard deviation, and it's going to, we're going to divide it by the margin of error, remember that plus minus number, and then we square everything. So that's our formula. Um, what value do we use for the population standard deviation? So remember, in the previous examples, we were given a population standard deviation or we were given a sample standard deviation. We need a standard deviation in the formula. We will not have a standard deviation from the sample until we actually determine how many items or people to survey, and then we collect our data, and then we do the calculations to get that standard deviation. So this is a key question. What value do we use for this standard deviation? Well, we can use some, um, a previous um, previous um, study that might be similar, which might have a standard deviation that we could we could um, assume that's going to be the same. Or what we can do is run a very small study or sample. This is called a pilot study. So we, um, we may survey 50 people, do some calculations, and, and use that, the, calc the standard deviation that we would calculate from that small sample, as the value we're going to then um, run back into um, this sample size uh, determination formula. For the questions that we're going to deal with in, the, in this course is that the standard deviation will be given to us. So this is the example that we're going to work with. We have a large company wants to know the average time workers spend driving to work each day, commute time. The company wants to select a sample size that provides a 90% level of confidence. Let's write that in there. And a margin of error of 2.3 hours. A previous study, so that's a very important statement here, previous study had a standard deviation of 13.5. How large should the sample size be given that we are using a 90% confidence interval? So 
Sample size determination questions always use a Z value. So know that the Z value is 1.64. So we put this into our formula. Um, 1.64 times the standard deviation 13.5 all divided by that margin of error of 2.3 hours. And then we square this. We're going to get something like 92.7. For the process of trying to determine the sample size needed, we're always going to round up. We can't survey 92.7 things. So our sample size that we need is 93. So given that we, if we have a sample size of 93, then we go out and talk to 93 workers ask them what their driving time is, then we can develop a confidence interval. Uh, and our confidence interval is going to give us a margin of error of plus or minus 2.3 hours. So the second type of um, sample size determination is questions dealing with the proportion. Um, so the sample size formula is going to look like this. It's going to be a Z value squared times a given P value and then 1 minus P divided by the margin of error value squared. So similar with the last example in terms of what value do we use for the standard deviation, what value do we use for the proportion? We're not going to know the sample proportion until after we have collected the data but we are trying to determine how many pieces of data to collect first. So this um, is very similar. We could use a, a sample proportion from a previous study. We could also do a pilot study. You know, do a really small, um, uh, small um, study um, to, in order to collect that information. Or, if in doubt, if none of those values is known to us, what we're going to use is P is going to equal 0.5. This value of 0.5 will maximize the sample size. What you don't want happening is picking, uh, is going through your research and then you realize at the end that your sample size was actually too small. You miscalculated something, for example or you didn't get all the responses back at, uh, that you thought you would. And so if your sample size is too small, your results aren't going to be as representative as, as possible. So it's always better to survey more than you need. So using this value 0.5, if no other value is given to us, this is what we're going to use. And this value will always ensure that the sample size is perhaps larger than you need. So the example we can work on is um, oops, this one here, a poll, is to be conducted to predict the winner of the upcoming election. If it's desired that the margin of error is no greater than 3.5%, so let's put that in there as a decimal, 0 0.035, what is the appropriate sample size needed for 95% confidence interval? So 95% confidence interval, that translates to a Z value of 1.96. There's no value for P given here. What is the sample proportion we need? You know, nothing in the question gives us either information about a previous study or a pilot study. So when it's not given, we always use a value of 0.5. And then we can calculate the sample size. Sample size formula is Z squared, 1.96 squared. Let's make that a fancy one. Let's just do that over here. 1.96 squared times 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5. So we get another 0.5 in there. Divided by the margin of error, 0.035. And don't forget to square that margin of error. Um, 
when we do the math for this one, we're going to get an n value, a sample size value, of 784. So we now we know how many people we need to call or talk to. Um, if we talk to 784 people that will vote in the upcoming election, um, we will have a margin of error less than 3.5 percent. So that, now we can determine um, or now we know the process to um, find that really small margin of error because a smaller margin of error with a large degree of confidence is the best of both um, both parts. We always want high degree of confidence and a small margin of error. Um, so now we can use that information to determine how many uh, or what the sample size should be. So that is it for our discussion of uh, Chapter 7, Confidence Intervals, and then uh, determining the appropriate sample size.